pick-me's, a breed of women known for their passive aggression and their antisocial behavior. This breed often develops Karenism later in life. It's important we don't support unethical breeding of women with Karenism, even in the early stages. We netizens scroll through countless of videos on whatever social media of our choice, and it isn't uncommon to find a woman lamenting over the fact that she has rights. <laughs> As many women with a brain who are spoon-fed misogyny spit it out because it tastes like 40 years of unpaid labor just for your husband that puts mid and midlife crisis to oh, fuck a 20-year-old. These pick me swallow it down and say yes please more daddy just so they can make shitty men in their lives feel less shitty. Mm. Anyway, I'm Savala Black Sheep. Have you any soul? No, sir. No, sir. But I do have time today uh, to yap about the cringe of pick -me's. Ignore that I look exceedingly unkempt. Ignore that I look like a middle school boy pulled out of the 90s that grew a pair of tits. Eh. I, oh, and I'm not wearing pants. Pants? are for gay people and bureaucrats. Not that I have anything against gay people and bureaucrats. I have many bureaucratic friends. Uh. Pygmies are women who cater their viewpoints to be more desirable to men. Naturally, as men are not a collective, a lot of people look at the self-deprecative ideology of pygmies and think, holy shit, bro, I don't know. Seek help. Go to a therapist. What the fuck's wrong with you? Because I don't know about you, but it's not all that sexy when a bitch is like, oh my god, babe. You know, women shouldn't be able to vote because we're just too emotional. As Peepaw and Geriatric Annoying Orange are measuring their one inch wonders on live television, pygmies within themselves are sad. They are born into an innately sexist culture and choose to feel lesser than their male counterparts because it's easier to fall in line than tell off that one really weird old guy at, at Thanksgiving that's like, back in my day, I had 12 women in my basement, but now the slave trade isn't legal anymore. Like, okay. Is it just me, or like, grandparents have the weirdest fucking love stories? Grandmas will be like, And then your grandpa stalked me for seven years when I was 15 and he was 30. And then eventually, he just convinced me. You a whole ass victim, okay. Mm. There's another issue regarding pygmies, is the over-labeling of pygmies. I've noticed it's just like way too much of an issue. Any woman that has like a traditionally male hobby, a cadence, diction, or anything is subject to being called pick me now. Sweetheart, I, I don't look like a man to get attention from I look like a man, so men will stop talking about my tits, actually. But pop off, love your spirit. The hater spirit is impressive. Is impressive, I will give you that. There is a good interpretation of girls girl. I mean, like, women have faced inequality for so goddamn long. Which is gay as hell, but like not the fun type of gay. And I think it's good to like, just like support each other by nature. Like just, we see a woman, we're like, pop off girly. I'm here to make sure men aren't nasty nasty to you. I'm yapping, I'm sorry. But like, it goes too far. Sometimes it goes too far. Where it goes, where, where, where. <laughs> It goes too far when it turns into sides. Like, just because you're a girl's girl doesn't mean you spit on every man you see. Like, men shouldn't be maltreated. They're, they're people like anyone else. Like, damn, okay. Like, there's a point where girl's girl goes from wholesomely looking out for each other to just misandry, bro. 
like I support bros bros as much as I support girls girls you know like it's important just to be there for each other not undermining the issues women face within society as a woman I know shut the fuck up that being said let's take a look at some content reflecting on a little pick me topic the funniest thing about the 4b movement is it always comes from women that look more masculine than the men that they're talking about and you know the exact women i'm talking about that have like the septum piercings the different color hair that literally are so far in their masculine role that the men weren't even looking in their direction in the first place. If you aren't aware, the 4B movement was a movement started in Korea due to the extreme mistreatment of women. So many women in Korea decided that they're not going to have relationships, marriage, sex, or children with Korean men. Women are taking back their power because of the consistent maltreatment they've experienced. Women having a choice to not put themselves in an abusive situation isn't a bad thing. The fact that this person thinks being attractive has anything to do with that is insanity. I have short hair and look like if a middle school boy grew a pair of tits, and I've been assaulted before. You don't have to be conventionally attractive for someone to assault you or want something with you. Honestly, it's not just insulting to women to say their trauma response and freedom of bodily autonomy is a product of not being desirable, but also insulting to men to assume all men would be just as shy as you are. Many men are unloyal because their wives won't sleep with them. I'm here to tell you that if your husband cheats and you haven't been sleeping with him, I don't feel bad for you at all. The question is, what have women done to deserve fidelity? Modern women have higher standards than ever. We bring less to the table than ever. What have we done to earn loyalty? We used to bring the loyalty up front. We used to come in with wife skills. Now we have crazy, you know, there's crazy pasts, right? Other men's children, overweight. What have we done to earn it? Women think that we are entitled to loyalty. The other problem is many men are unloyal because their wives won't sleep with them. I'm here to tell you that if your husband cheats and you haven't been sleeping with him, I don't feel bad for you at all. In fact, I think he should at that point. <laughs> Once again, this weird projection on all men, as if all women and men are two singular beings. Thinking commitment's only valid if you're putting out is disgusting. That's like treating people as if the only reason you're gonna marry them is for sex. Like, don't get married if you're not ready for dips in your sex life. It isn't the end of the world. I mean, I'm Arrowways. I'm a no sex in general type of person, so this sentiment is even crazier to me. Sex isn't a necessity for men or women. Maybe instead of excusing cheating, we can talk about how communication and relationship building is important in marriage instead of spitting in the face of your partner. You know, the people that believe in divorce, go be in long-term relationships. Leave marriage for the people that actually believe in, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health till death do us part. Doesn't the sanctity of marriage also rely on the woman being a virgin, so you wouldn't be able to get married? I'm, what are you, what are you? Doing? Well, you've spoken quite openly there's... about how you're not a virgin. And so if you want to preserve that sanctity of marriage, I then, think, you know, you know I, and I, would... I just think that you're upholding standards that you don't actually I, 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 you know, and. That's a fair, that's a fair complaint. I wish I was. But, you know, we can't go back. I don't know what you want me to say. Watching Pearl stumble is <laughs> quite fun, I'll admit. But also kind of sad. She doesn't have an answer. The fact she has put herself in a situation to feel shame for a normal experience for someone her age is is sad to watch. What is she, like 35? Mind you, I say she's put herself in this situation because it has been shown that she was not raised in this mindset, only adopted it later in her life. On the topic of marriage, marriage is put in place because most humans partner up. Their finances, roof, and children tend to be the same. People using legal marriage is no one's business, but their their own. Regulating it is a breach of rights, in my opinion. People of all cultures get married, with different expectations in each culture. America is a melting pot. To stop people from getting married that don't fit Pearl's perspective would be stepping on the toes of millions of people. Okay, here are some random things that I think are a little bit pick-me. Number one is being friends with your friend's boyfriends, like separately from your friend. Your friend's boyfriend should be like your loose acquaintance at bed. Honestly, with an undertone of enemy. Oh, number two. 
staying friends with your friend's ex-boyfriend after they break up, what do you guys have to talk about? They should live in constant fear of running into in public. Constant fear. Making someone feel embarrassed if they dressed up. Like if you walk in and the person's like, oh my god, someone looks fancy. Where are you going after this a wedding? You know, I just usually wear sweatpants and sweatshirts. That's just me. I'm different than you. I'm better than you. One time I curled my hair for Thanksgiving and my cousin walked in and was like, oh my god, Becca, your hair is curly. I could tell that took a lot of effort. That's so fun. I'm um, pretending not to know about Facetune. One time I was showing a group of people my old, embarrassing, like terribly Facetune photos, and in front of guys too. And this girl was like, uh, "What is Facetune? People do that." Okay. Cleaning up a guy's house after a party or a pregame, and being like, "I just have to do this. I'm sorry." No, you don't. No, you don't. Putting your friend down in front of their love interest. No. You're supposed to be complimenting. If you can't think of any compliments, make them up. As an example, if Zoe's new boyfriend's sitting at the table, you can be like, does everyone, did everyone here know that Zoe is the best chef in North America? And when Zoe's like, I literally can't even cook cereal, you can be like, okay, so I knew you are gonna be humble about this. You're always humble about everything. The best chef is not the one that cooks food per se. It's more about there's an intang there's an intangible X factor inside of you that I think we can, all everyone at the table can agree. It's cause you're a sweetheart at the end of the day. And we love you. And so there you go. So yeah. Okay, here is where I'm going to talk about the overlabeling of pick me. Don't send this creator hate. I realize me and her most likely have exceedingly different social groups. I don't think it's pick me to be friends with your friend's partner. They're just a person like anyone else and oftentimes are in the same social group. So if you like playing games or a certain media your friend doesn't like but their partner does, it's not like yapping is making out. Once again, I reiterate, I'm Arrow Ace, so I'd sooner jump off a cliff than engage in coupling, so maybe my perspective is screwed. But I just don't think it has to be that deep. And I can't imagine how uncomfortable and hurtful it is to have your partner's friends ignore you and treat you as a quote unquote enemy just because you love someone. Then you got the staying friends with your friend's ex. I mean, once again, they're both just people. Now, if the ex was abusive, 100% back off, comfort your friend. Or if you want to get with the ex, that's insane. Why would you date your friend's ex? That's weird. But if they ended amicably or just paths diverged or just moving on, why not stay friends? Situations and people aren't black and white. <laughs> Cleaning up after someone showed you hospitality is bad? What? If I'm invited to a party, I'm going to repay the favor by helping clean. I can't imagine how stressful it's gonna be for the host the next day to get everything cleaned up. Naturally, helping them clean up just sounds like a nice thing to do. I think more people should do that. What is pick me about that? I will agree though, putting your friend down at any time is lame as hell. Especially in an attempt to ruin someone's view of them. That's messed up. That's weird. What the hell? Overall, I suppose the video isn't necessarily bad, just relatively disagreeable in my opinion. But of course, me and this woman have vastly different life experiences, so, so I merely may just view this from a different angle and neither of us are necessarily wrong in our interpretations. <laughs> If I kiss you and your lips, would you tell your sisters in the morning? Would you keep it a secret? I ain't felt this way before. Wanna tell you that I like you, but I don't cause I'm not sure. I just take her heart. This girl is just sitting there. I am so confused. There is no context, just a girl but at lunch with her friends. Honestly, I view this type of content as bullying. I'm unsure if it's a joke since the profile picture of the person who posted this is also a blonde girl with long hair. But honestly, I, I can't really tell the difference if it's someone else or the same person. Anyway, labeling people this way merely because they don't fit into what you deem as girl enough is very weird. <laughs> I've noticed it becoming more common as well. Making the term pick me so watered down, a lot of the times it comes across as, well, pick me, alienation and bullying. It's the new brand of pick me, the girly pick me, that call other people pick me's on the basis of not being girly pop enough. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Discord server. And if you enjoy my art, check out my Etsy with adult coloring sheets, shirt designs, and wall art, all linked in description. Back to the video. 
thighs are sweaty. It's fucking hot as tits in here. You got British people constantly yapping about being like, Empty oh, <laughs> heavens! It's unfathomably hot! It's 70 degrees Fahrenheit! And it's because of the humidity! Suck my ball! No hate against British people. I have British friends! Sadly. Pygmies are not a new issue. We've just now made a name for them, honestly. And there's another breed of Pygmies. The not like other girls. And the main difference between not like other girls and Pygmies is Pygmies heavily rely on male validation. Not like other girls often do, but also have another factor of rejecting gender norms. <coughs> and why that matters is because a lot of not like other girls are like middle schoolers who see the maltreatment of women who actively see the shaming so many women go through just because of their hobbies and interests and they want to detach themselves from that because it's scary it's scary to just be vulnerable and then have someone be like stupid little girl how dare you think harry's miles is smexy or Direction one midnight? Look, my my interest was five nights at Freddy's. I was I was not like other girls, but I was not like other girls in the stupidest way possible. I was like, you know, me and Foxy one day are gonna get married. That was my thing. Some bitches were into midnight. <laughs> I was into an animatronic fox. That's not a flex. That's fucking repugnant. I could have at least chose Freddy. He was better. Anyways, what I'm saying is let's have compassion for those little girls and young adults still <laughs> dreading the gender norms and expectations they have on them as women because personally I hate them. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if this is stupid, but like when a man <laughs> opens the door for me, and like is acting all chivalrous and kind and like tries to kiss my hand. I'm like, oh, uh, you good, bro? Okay. Mm. <laughs> that did happen to me once. That did happen. I, I went, I went <laughs> to a restaurant in Old Tbilisi's, and some fucking dude, like, like he was my waiter, and he he brought a fucking rose to my table. While I was eating King Kali. And he brought a rose to my table while I was eating King Kali. I think I said that right. King Kali, whatever. Um, <laughs> and then when I left, <laughs> he like came out when I was walking away and he was like, What is your name? And I'm like, Uh, Saba. And then he's like, mm. Oh. <laughs> And he got down, he got down, and he grabbed my hand and kissed it, and I'm staring at him like, Bombastic side eye. You look very submissive and breedable down there, bro. You into pegging? Ugh. For some people, I suppose they would have enjoyed that. Personally, I was like, is this guy gay? <laughs> no hate, no hate, bro, no hate. You just got a weird fucking taste, bro. You like, you not like other boys. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have for today, folks. You have work tomorrow. For school, we're comparing women to dogs. Bark, bark. But as always, don't dream about wheat-based byproducts. 